Hello, my name is Tom Whipple and I'm a Technology Transfer Manager here at the University of Vienna. I'm here to answer some questions you may have about technology transfer. The Technology Transfer Office is designed to foster relationships between the university and industry. It becomes a point of contact for industry partners who want to collaborate with the university and also gives us a chance to promote university technologies, which are developed by the academics here, to the wider world. Essentially, every university has a technology and transfer office. It may be given a different name. Some universities it plays a much larger role. For example, in Sweden, they have what's known as professor's privilege, where any invention that an academic comes up with belongs to them and they're allowed to commercialise it privately. However, Swedish universities do have technology transfer offices, although they form a more voluntary basis where the academics can come to them. In countries such as Austria, which don't have professor's privilege, the university essentially owns the, um, the, the rights to the invention, so the technology transfer office plays a more central role in that sense. Revenue which is generated from many commercial activities is then reinvested, reinvested back into universities for further research, so the technology transfer offices do play an important role in the functioning of the university. To help you as a researcher, the Technology Transfer Office can provide help and assistance, um, also willing to, willing to give advice, maybe you want to generate some new ideas, create a startup company, we can help out in that aspect. On a more day-to-day -day basis, if you have any, for example, materials that need to be transferred from one university to another or from Within industry, we can provide material transfer agreements. These are just small contracts which make sure that the transfer material and the ownership is looked after. Also, if you need to talk about any confidential information, we can help provide non-disclosure agreements. Essentially, this gives you the freedom to talk about confidential data without it being released to the public. We can also help with grants applications and also when projects are running, we can really help. So if a big key is impact, and exploitation. So if during the course of your grant, the writing process, you come up with some ideas which may have commercial value, or during the running of the grant, come up with, a, with, a, with an amazing new idea, we can help to commercialise that. If you're writing a research proposal, obviously it's ideal that, if, that we know about it. It's always useful to know. We do work closely with the research services department. So your key point, point of contact will be them. Um, but we work closely with, with them and collaborate. And so if there are blocks of text in the application which is going to involve impact and commercialization related, we will then be happy to have a look through them and provide advice on how to refine the text if needed. But you're welcome to come to us directly and we can give advice. So the way it works in Austria is that any invention that comes from a, it's based on employment contracts. So it's similar to the law for industry as well. So if you're an employee of the university, if you create an invention, you have to inform the university. So we have a special form to be filled out just to formally report the invention. The university then has a three month window to claim the invention. Um, during this time, we will start looking into seeing if we think it might be patentable or maybe any commercial viability. The way patents work essentially is that it has to be novel, so it's not been done before, it has to be inventive. Inventive is a rather subjective term. It's based on would someone who's skilled in the field but has no imagination have come up with the idea? So are there any non-logical steps that, that are taken? And if you can sort of convince the examiner of the patent that that there are, then you can be granted a patent. Patents are also assessed on industrial applicability, but this topic is not so heavily assessed by the, by the patent office. However, in the tech transfer office, we do try and look at this because having a patent on its own is quite an expensive, expensive process. Our aim is not to make money, but also not to lose money. So we want to try and be able to commercialize these technologies and really bring the work, the amazing work that's being done in the university to bring it out into the wider world.
Um, there's a lot of misconceptions in the patenting process. It's, it's quite a convoluted process. So there's no such thing as a worldwide patent. If you put a patent application, you don't have a patent. Um, patents can take between two and 11 years to be granted. Um, in the European Patent Office, normally looking at around five to seven years between application and actually having a granted patent in your hands. So as I mentioned, your first filing is the priority filing. You file in one country or territory, and you then have a 12 month window to file in any other countries with, around the world. This can get quite expensive very quickly. So there is a, the Patent Cooperation Treaty. This is an agreement between, I think it's 136 states. And they all agree that essentially you have one single application, which is equivalent to applying to every single individual patent office at the same, same time. Notable exceptions are Argentina and Taiwan from this. Essentially, this gives you an 18 month application. And after 18 months, you then need to decide which individual countries you want to go for and obviously pay them an individual fee. The actual patenting process involves a shirt search, which is carried out by the, by the patent office. So each individual patent office of each country decides whether or not they're going to grant your patents. So you may be given one in the US, again, it's rejected in a different country or vice versa. But essentially what we try and do at the university is to get a wide ranging search report at the beginning or as soon as, soon as we can to get an idea really of if the patent office feels that this is patentable or not. And based on that, we can then proceed as to which countries we want to go for. Also looking at industries, where the industry is based, what it allows. As a side point, just to note that having a patent for a given country just stops other people making or selling your product in that territory. You can obviously give a license and then allow them to do it, or you can sell the rights to them, but they can't do it. So they can make it and sell it in other countries. And in such a fact, your patent has given them the details of how you do it. But in the country where you have the patents, operations have, have to cease. At the University of Russia, we have quite a wide range of technologies on the portfolio. I think uh, one good example is, which is in the press a lot at the moment, it's gaining quite a lot of publicity, is the CRISPR case, uh, which the University of Vienna is, 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 is part of. I think this really highlights the complexities of technology transfer that you have a great idea, but it's sometimes not so easy to then get that into, in, into the wider world. It requires further investments, further research, further sort of clarification of whether you are really the ones who came up with it or did someone else come up with something that's almost the same or slightly different. So it's a very, a very complex case, but I think it really highlights the work that we, that we do to try and bring university, university technologies into the wider world. It's, it obviously depends on what comes in in terms of disclosures. If the academics have a more, say, productive year um, or come up with a more inventive year, then we're willing to file, to file more. But I'd say as a rough guide, we're filing around 10 to 20 per year. And we have a patent portfolio, active patent portfolio of around 40 patent families. Thank you.